Hello, 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 everybody. This is Professor West. Welcome back. And as some of you know from some of my previous videos, I make a lot of videos for my students. I teach a lot of different programming classes. I teach C Sharp, C++, Java, Python, uh, Visual Basic. There's a lot of them. And uh, I like to create these videos to try to help my students anytime they might be having trouble or, you know, questions with what's going on. And I'll, I like to share them online for anybody that, you know, wants to learn programming that it might help. So, I'm going to start a brand new series right now called Python. Uh, that's the language we're going to be using. And Python is a pretty new, uh, well, it's not new, but it's really gained in popularity in the last few years. It's a programming language. And you can see a little bit of it up here on the screen. Um, it's so popular because it's very similar to just plain English. I mean, there's some code, but not like some of the languages that we've dealt with. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to show you how to download and install Python. And then I'm going to walk you through downloading and installing an IDE, an integrated development environment called PyCharm. And both are fairly simple. So I went to python.org. As you can see here, this is the Python home site. Um, to download it, I'm going to point to downloads and you can come in and tell it all this different stuff but by default this one here that's up says download for windows since i have windows that's the one i'm going to be downloading and whatever the newest one is is the one that they'll have here in this case it's 3.7.0 so i click on that and because it's windows the extra little uh safety screen comes up down here at the bottom instead of just running it automatically it downloads it and waits for you to decide um, since it's an executable file, it wants me to make sure that, you know, I actually wanted to download and install this file. So I'm going to click it. And um, this new window comes up. It asks me a couple things. First, it asks if I want to use a regular installation or if I want to do a custom installation. Custom installations can be tricky because you have to go through and specify what you do or don't want downloaded. So most of the time, um, it's recommended that you do the standard installation. There's a couple of additional prompts down here. Um, I'm going to click on this one, make sure it's checked. It says add Python 3.7 to PATH. And notice PATH is in all caps. The reason is because um, when you tell it to run a program, it's going to look in a specific file for that program. And this way, we're telling it to add a path file. So whenever I try to run a Python program, it'll run it in the folder that it creates here rather than some obscure folder on my computer that I may or may not be able to find. So make sure this is checked. And I'm just going to tell it to go ahead and install it. I'm not sure if you could see that or not, but a little window just came up and said, do you really want to install yes or no? And I clicked yes. Uh, I don't know if this uh, screen capture program kept running during that time or not. But anyway, if I would have clicked no, it would not have installed. Notice that now it's doing the setup in progress. And now it's finished. Um, setup was successful. Special thanks to Mark Harmon. Without years of free Windows expertise, Python, blah, blah. And we're done. So we click the close button. And we're totally finished. What we can do now is, um, at the very bottom of the screen, which is off of the screen that you can see here on mine, but um, there's a little area down there where it says type here to search. And when I typed, when I clicked in it, this little area started to come up. Notice when I type Python, some of it comes up here and I can click on it. This is the um, program that I just downloaded from this other page. And you can tell that it worked because it comes up and it says Python. It tells you a version, which is interesting because that's not it, on the one I downloaded. It said 3.7, and here it says 3.6.3. .3. So that's very interesting. But then it says type help, copyright, credits, and license for more information. Now, here's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize. Right now, this is running and it's waiting for me to type a Python command. So if I type... Um, something simple. I could type a simple line of code, print, 
open parentheses. Um, in Python, you can use a single quote or double quote as long as you use it the same. So, um, hello, exclamation point, how are you? And notice I use a single quote here because I used one at the front. Um, close my line and hit the enter key. Notice that hello, how are you showed up because that's all I told it to do was print that line. This is not the most efficient way to write programs, obviously. If you're going to use this, what you would actually want to do is write the program in Notepad, or Notepad++ would be even better, and then save it in the file that the path variable pointed to. And then you would come here and you would simply give it the run command to run that program. So as you can tell, this is a little bit, a little bit of a, uh, how can we say, cumbersome. It's a little more involved than what we really like. And that's why I strongly recommend downloading an IDE, an integrated development environment. There's tons of them that you can choose from. And I'm going to use one called PyCharm. Let me exit out of this real quick. And let's go ahead and just go to the PyCharm website. Um, PyCharm dot oops actually it's not PyCharm charm dot it's jetbrains um, dot com slash PyCharm because jetbrains is the ones that made the PyCharm program and as you can see now you could simply click the download now this is the professional um, Python IDE for professional developers um, uses cookies blah 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 I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to download and now it's gonna come up and it's gonna ask me do I want the professional fully featured which is a free trial or do I want the community which is a lightweight IDE that's free open source well I don't just want a free trial I want the free open source because it will do absolutely everything that we need to do in all of my classes and a lot more um, now you have this page here gives you the option if you'd like to enter your email address and let them send you stuff you can but the programs already downloaded here so all I got to do is click on it oh it's not finished downloading so while it's downloading I'll uh, talk a little more about this sometimes um, websites like this like to keep track of who downloads their programs and that way they can send you advertisements and um, updates and various things that may or may not help and you're totally welcome to do that if you'd like I'm not going to because I get enough emails as it is if I have a problem I'll look it up so okay now it's going to open for me la 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 open sesame I don't know if you saw that or not, but another window came up and asked if I really wanted to run the program, yes or no, and I told it yes. And now we come to the Welcome to the PyCharm Community Edition Setup. You click the Next button. It asks where you want to store it. Uh, I've already selected a folder because I've already installed it once. And I click Next. And then it's going to ask you a few more questions. Do you want to create a desktop shortcut? Um, if so, and do you want to create any associations? Now, for starters, you, if you're not sure what kind of computer you have, if you're using Windows, the newer Windows are 64-bit programs, and the older ones are 32. If you click the 32, it would run on everything, and if you know you have a newer one, then you can click 64. And create associations is where you it would go through and look for all .py files on your computer and link them to this program. I don't want to do that for now. So I'm going to ignore that. Some of you may want to go ahead and click on this. Um, that way anytime you try to run a .py file it would automatically run it in PyCharm. Uh, I deal with several different IDEs and I like to be able to choose so I'm not going to check this box. I'm going to click next, then I'm going to click install, and here we go.
Takes a little while. Hopefully not too long. It seems to be going a lot faster now. Dun, dun, dun. Depending on how fast yours did, you may or may not want to pause this video until yours is finished. Um, okay, next thing that comes up says, PyCharm Community Edition has been installed on your computer. Click Finish to close the setup. And if I check this box, it'll go ahead and run it for me. It put the icon on the desktop because I clicked the box it told it to. Um, but I'm not going to, instead of going and finding it, for now I'm just going to click that and let it come up. And here it is, guys. If I click Create a New Project, and I can come in and tell it what I want to call it. And let's, let's call it My Test Program. And I click the Create button. And it's creating the virtual environment now. Um, here's some tips it's got listed here. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the video at this time because I was only doing this video to walk you through how to set it up. Um, the next video I do will teach you how to use this IDE. So, um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, there comes the rest of it now. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to click the close button. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Um, as always, you're free to leave me any um, requests or comments or anything. You can email them to me or you can post them online. I love to hear requests. I mean, I love to hear people's feedback on this stuff. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next segment.